things happen. That's why all destination retailers have them, because they want people to know where they're at. That's the play on words. They, they, both, they both are available regardless of how you see them, because it's communication. And that's what billboards do, they communicate. Basically, that's what we are. Can you please go back to the photograph of the, the proposed sign? It looked like a, okay, so that, who created that image? Uh, that was created by a consultant in the round in the last test. That was not created for this test. What it would probably look like. Mm, yes, but you have to imagine that you're also not on the interstate looking at those. The interstate being to the... The interstate being to the... Right. Mm, let's see, to your left in the picture on the left, because that's looking north towards Walmart. And then the interstate would be on the right side of the right picture, because that's heading south towards the Hampton Inn, which... I understand that that was applied for as one sign, where there's clearly two that are within 20 feet of one another. As he mentioned, they were placed at the rear corner, rear corners of this property, and they were allowed to do that. So again, it's kind of that first in, first out. And the code makes no provision for considering that. Hence, we need to ask for a variance. The idea being to provide advertising for a destination retail. My client was obviously very much under the opinion, and so was the seller of this property, that there would not be a problem with putting a high price sign here. As you probably all know, Mr. Lionel has been doing business in the city for a long time. He was not aware that there was a separation requirement. Any other questions? I have a question. How big is the sign? Um, the sign, uh, as shown, you don't have the updated one. It was going to be 120 feet now off of the ground. Mm -hmm. And the sign area was not going to change. It was going to remain at. Okay.
500 feet on the bank on this side. But if you're further up, they have to be 500 feet of sand. So they don't interfere with the site. But their placement affected the neighbors. The entire parcel. Well, this, this, this parcel would have needed the merits anyway because it's like 500 feet long. 500 feet from this side is on Walmart property. Right, right. And I'm sorry, Matt, did you say that's the only location on the Hampton Insight that that sign could have gone? They have a 300 foot along. Yeah, the good requirement is their rear yard. This is their rear yard. Oh, that's considered their rear yard. Because they're closer, closer they're getting closer to the car on the center side. So they could go too far that way. It's kind of a down now. Like this, there's a street up here. So this is the rear yard. And when they were built, this was all they planned all the way into Final High School. So what you're saying is that your office would be willing to work with them, but for a lesser variance. Correct. Okay. I mean, they're a very deep parcel. They're a little different situation than these smaller parcels here. The smaller parcels here are entitled to have one, like both of these could have one now. Um, so what's the difference if they have one now, or Andrew has one up in the same general area? The effect on the community is the same. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, so we were looking at somewhere in the front yard. I mean, it's still a long ways back from the local street. Remember, that's the intent of the regulations. But it's you know, a good distance from existing signs. So if, if this variance, we denied it, they could revisit this issue again, making some adjustments and accommodations and meeting with you. Right. If it gets denied, then we've got to wait a year. Would it be possible to table this issue until you can consider uh, <laughs> that's so that would allow him to uh, resubmit without having to wait a year? That's what we've done in the past month, and that was one of the purposes of the test I met with him out on site Friday was to look at the fact they had parked a crane back here in the back of Cheddar's and went through the sign up. They couldn't get as high with that one. Uh, no, we we like couldn't that. get the crane that was stuck in the rear of the property in the front yeah. here because of the rain. This is yeah, a bigger was. crane and they were able to get higher in the air and we broke around the sea. It's very interesting. I mean, the traffic, the interstate, how visually you see it from a distance, but you can't read it. And then as you get a little bit closer, the trees along the interstate block the view. And when you get close enough, then you can see it and read it. It's just from here, you have to look over to the side of the road. Approximately 700 feet to your left, or right, right whichever direction you're going. 1,500 feet away, and then it's the next one. Um, it's just, you know, so different than some of the others that are far off the highway. Not all of our highway signs are way along this way. It is, you know, not a lot of my examples on the other side of Northern Drive. It is not my client's intent to preclude somebody else from having a highway sign in the future if they so choose. We think that the code is. And would not adequately, does not adequately address these types of situations where it really is a first in, first served in. Do you think there is um, some way that you can sit back down with that and possibly come up with another solution? Or the only other be your desire for us to make a decision on another one is here. So we could look back. Yes, we had discussed that, and I think visually, as you're going up and down the interstate, that works perfectly fine. My client would be happy with it, but we'd be within 50 feet of the other signs, and I thought, and it's two, one of the alternatives we looked at was sort of next to the Hampton Inn sign, so you, no matter which direction you're looking at it, it's not blocking the Hampton, nor is it being blocked by the Hampton Inn sign, but it's a different kind of variant. Here, you're 250 feet from two signs. Here, you're about 500 feet or close to it from one side, but much closer to the other. And so it's a trade off. And a partial variance from two sides or a pretty big variance just from one side. And that's a perfectly acceptable location that I thought that, given staff's comments, that you're too close and trying to ask for one closer didn't we seem to make much sense. I mean, it makes a little more sense visually. And it would also, again, keep us from impacting any future high rise signs for other development. We can start looking you know, further up the sign and we get back to the same area. We can amend the, the, uh, the application and take action on that today, correct? 
Right, but the variance is from right. that code section. So if you want to prescribe a different uh, variation on the variance, not to mention the that one, but yeah, uh, you can do that. That's that open to you. It's just a different placement, a different distance number being associated. Since our move closer in the two sides is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Aesthetically. I still have several questions. Um, if Kenner's put up a sign today by right, would that preclude the undeveloped piece of property in the front of the Gander Mountain from putting up a sign because it's within 500 feet? It would depend on the 500 feet. Here's your 500 foot distance. It looks like it, it looks like even from corner to corner, it might it would be close. Okay. And, and if Gander Mountain wanted to put one sort of where that cross X is there, um, and they came back, could you do that administratively? Would that be within, you could do an administrative variance on that? For spacing? Yeah. No. No. Okay. That's that's a different thing. We're looking at variance at this point, just for spacing. We're in the room, oh, we're, okay. we're meeting height, we're oh, meeting okay. somewhere. Okay. So they still have to wait a year to get an administrative variance on that? No, if, if a variance is denied, then they can't probably is locked out of another variance request for a year. Okay. But here, if you went with this, it would be a minor variance for spacing. Right. But also variance to not be in the rear yard. Right. Okay. The property for All right. And so you're open to putting it over by the Hampton Inn sign yes. over on that side rear yard. Mm -hmm. I think. That sounds good to me. And there, it's not rear yard seven, so you would have to go to that and prescribe a distance. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm making an assumption that I'm actually not finding that. I understand. And any questions for myself? Thank you. Is there any opposition to anything that we've discussed that you've been able to keep up with? Okay, seeing none, and I assume that with all you've stated, there's not been any objections to your office. We've not had any contact. contact. Maybe some folks here in the audience. Do we care to discuss this among ourselves? If not, we'll do some kind of formulated motion. Have we heard from those in opposition? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I asked. I didn't hear that. We got it. I almost looked at that. Carrie got it. That's fine. Probably in the best interest of everyone involved that we table this, give um, applicant an opportunity to really go out and see exactly what we're talking about. Well, I have a motion on the floor now. We, well, we did visit the site and you looked at this. It's just a matter of is it 50 feet? Could we do 30 feet and not start the other sign? And, 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 you, and do you know that now? And if you don't know that, then perhaps. Our sign, our proposed sign is 36 feet wide at the top. So we would, at the absolute minimum, need to be 
15 feet away from the Hampton Inn sign, plus half the width of their sign. Is the width of their sign 40 feet? I don't know, but probably not that big. Yeah, I think it's so. I think I think Take a 1,500 people playing leeway. Grab one of these. That sounds reasonable. He maybe wants to be only 30 feet. Maybe put it as 30 feet from sign structure to sign structure, edge to sign to edge to sign, so it's not too close that way. Properties, um, 
um, the staff has recommended that the applicant um, construct a minimum six foot high privacy fence along the entire north boundary. Um, the staff has also recommended that along the west and south lot lines that the applicant provides for a 20 foot undisturbed buffer. <coughs> They made those, those recommendations with the four conditions you see in your packet there. Um, they have given the applicant some time to construct that fence due to his financial um, uh, reasons. Um, January 1 is, is what staff recommended as far as giving him time to construct that fence. Um, and with that, citing criteria C, staff recommended approval for his parents. Any questions? And just for a note, there was an update um, to the time you received the staff report. We did receive a petition if I put a copy um, at your stations there from the neighboring property. Yeah, I'm a little confused about the sequencing of this rezoning along the various. Okay. So the rezoning has been applied for. Yes, sir. And the, the variance has been applied for. Which are they going in parallel? And each have equal weight? I mean, can the variance take effect without the rezoning? Actually, the, the variance becomes null and void if the applicant doesn't get his it. zone to commercial. And when will we know that? June 12th, or next Tuesday. And in, in an effort to work with the applicant, um, we could have chosen uh, for him to go through the rezoning first and then apply for the variance, but it would delay him another month. So we took the app, both applications concurrently. Attorney Lyon, I have a question about the notices. You see there's an issue of May 18th, and the meeting was held on May 21st. Yes. Can you speak to that? Sure, sure. We're required to send notices out at least 15 days prior to the final public hearing, which is that June 12th hearing. 